Hoy somos bendecidos con la presentación de una de estas reveladoras conferencias titulada La maestra cuenta chistes e historias budistas Un monje llamado Joyas Celestiales parte 2 de 2 en Entre maestro y discípulos dada en inglés el 29 de agosto de 2015 en Francia. Okay. This is a story. No, no, so scary anymore. Okay, it's a good story. <laughs> <laughs> My God, Buddha uh, re incarnation, huh? Many incarnation. A very scary story. Huh? Such a scary and extraordinary sacrifice. According to Buddhism and the believer and the tradition, when you read sutra and all that, you have to put on incense, flower, you know, and bow to the sutra first and thank all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva in ten directions, all respectfully, before you read it, okay? And then you cover the sutra also with silk or, you know, beautiful cloth, and I just make it more popular, yeah, more easy, simple. And I apologize to all the Buddha. I say, if I done something wrong, according to the tradition, my heart is full of respect. It's just that I cannot always do that. So please, all the sin, whatever I've done wrong, is all on me. At least other people, they hear the names of the Buddha, according to the Sutta, they will get benefit. Yes. Okay, this is a story about uh, a monk called, um, called Celestial Jewels. First, I have heard one time the Buddha was in a Save country in the go garden of uh, a charitable nobleman and the prince Kida. In this city, there was a noble family, a no nobleman. His wife had just given birth to uh, a boy, which is very, very uh, good-looking. Mm. And uh, in the middle of, uh, you know, while, having, while giving birth to this boy, mm. suddenly from the sky, a lot of jewels raining down, mm. like gold, silver, mm. Um, you know, semi-precious stone, precious stone, and all kind of stones, all kind of beautiful, you know, tiger eyes and and um, diamonds, all, all kind of precious stone rain down on the yard, full, full, the yard is full of, <laughs> of jewel. Oh, everybody was so excited, the whole, the whole village people came, and to look and help them to pick up all the jewel. I hope they help to pick up the jewel. <laughs> and everybody prays the parents for such a good, uh, virtuous family that gave birth to a beautiful child and so meritorious. And they said to themselves, this is a rare, truly rare phenomenon. Mm. Since times immemorial, we never saw, probably never happened like this. So the parents was perplexed, you know, and worry also, uh, mixed feeling. He was thinking, what kind of uh, omen is this? Mm. So he asked. They asked the astrologer and the clairvoyant to came to come to their house and check it out. You know, the astrology, the astrology of the newborn baby. Whether or not he is a good person and whether or not they can make him into a good citizen. Mm. So the astrologer said, please bring the boy here, mm. out. Mm. Yeah, so the wife brought the child out. He was checking 
you know, the clairvoyance, checking, 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 looking, 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 look, 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 look. oh, not too bad. <laughs> hmm. And the astrologer said to the parents, No, poor sir, your son has many good uh, signs of a good gentleman, like his uh, head is round. Is your head round? <laughs> If not, just cover it, no problem. <laughs> his head is round, his nose is straight. Um, uh, his uh, ears is uh, full, his uh, forehead is square. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mine too, huh? Mm. And then uh, his uh, f- uh, foot... His feet and his hands are all full, you know, kind of very full, mm. thick and full. How can they tell it's just a baby? Means. <laughs> oh, baby has really uh, chubby, chubby hands and chubby feet, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Never mind. Okay. But he said this boy is going to be a, a benefactor to the country, to society. If, if he uh, stay at home, nah? if he become a monk, he will attain liberated uh, level of consciousness. Yeah. So both of you have peace. Take good care of him. It will be okay. Yeah. Mm. Parents heard that. Oh, happy, happy, happy. Who wouldn't be? Huh? Mm. So they asked him to choose a name for the boy. The clairvoyant uh, astrologer said, because when he was born, there's so much jewel raining down from the sky. So we we call him uh, Celestial Jewels. Yeah? Mm. Jewels. Yeah? Jewels. (laughs) Okay, so the nobleman and family thank him a lot and give him a lot of reward. Okay. Just as the uh, astrologer told them, the celestial, um, celestial ju- jewel boy, yeah, when he's growing up, he was very intelligent, very talented. But nevertheless, he pre- he was very much interested in, uh, like. Um, you know, practicing kind of uh, documents and you know, doctrines, yes, like Dharma, you know, meditation, Buddha teaching, etc. He prefer to do research into this kind of philosophical area. One day, he went to another city to visit one of the uh, family clan member, mm. and this person took him to vi- to pay obeisance to the Buddha. Mm. When he came, he saw everybody uh, circumambulate the Buddha three times, and he also did the same. And then he sat down on one side. And then he looked at the Buddha, he saw him, he is so majestic, yeah, so dignified, uh, looked like no one on earth or heaven could compare to him in such an appearance, as a beautiful appearance. And then in his heart, you know, suddenly he became very fond of the Buddha, very admiring. And then he just wanted to forget all the whole world <laughs> and everything else, follow the Buddha's footsteps and become a Buddha. <laughs> At that time, the Buddha was... Uh, uh, the Buddha... Uh, went up to the days, the high days, you know, so that all the people can see him, you know, of course, normally. And then he talked about uh, the twelve, the twelve uh, um, affinity, yeah? And then uh, about the uh, transmigration, suffering and all that, yes. After he uh, finished preaching, everybody prostrate to him and left. And the celestial jewel boy, after listening to the Buddha, he was so happy, his heart so open, so pleased. And then he already decided right there 
to follow the Buddha's footstep, to be a monk with him. So when, as soon as he came home, he knew in front of his parents and said to them, Obeisance to both my beloved parents. To be able to attain a human birth is really, truly, very, very rare. But to see a living Buddha physically in this world is even much, much more rare. Yesterday, I had a chance to see the Buddha. And then I have heard him talking, uh, uh, preaching the Dharma, the truth, the precious truth Dharma. So I observed that only Buddhism, you know, at that time, you know, the Buddha's teaching is the, the best that can liberate you. No other preaching, no other teaching at this time could do the thirst. So please, please allow me to leave home. The parents saw that the, uh, the boy has such a tendency for spiritual practice, was very pleased. They were very pleased. So he said, yes, they say yes. If you would like to become a monk, renunciate, we are very pleased. So after getting the permission from the parents, he prostrated to them, and then he left and go find the Buddha. He went to see the Buddha, and he said he he, he also prostrated now in front of the Buddha and say, obeisance to the world honor one. Since uh, times immemorial, we are transmigrating in the sea of suffering, of birth and death and old age and a lot of pain and sorrow. No one has helped us. No one could have helped us. Now, uh, the Buddha is like a, a ship, you know, a boat, yeah, that come on time and rescue all of us. Today, I came here with all my utmost sincerity Please accept me as your uh, renunciate disciple, so that I can find the liberation in this lifetime. Please have mercy and accept me. Then the Buddha, of course, say, "Welcome, welcome, beat you, <laughs> welcome, monk." Yeah. So now it must be one thousand two hundred. Uh, 58 or something. <laughs> Not 50 anymore, huh? No. Or maybe 60 something. We, we lost count now. They just count one by one like that. It make trouble for us to keep count. If they came all together, who is it for me? Mm. After the Buddha said that, his hair suddenly all fell off. <laughs> so you are right. Mind you, be careful. Eh? If you see the Buddha and if you don't want to be monk, don't go too near, understand? <laughs> don't say anything. <laughs> because if you say you want to become disciples, he thinks he think you, you, <laughs> you want to be monks. And then your hair just naturally fall off like that. And then it won't grow back again. That is the thing, if the Buddha say that, you know? If you shave it with your a knife, then it may grow back. But if the Buddha say, welcome, beat you, <laughs> and your hair won't grow back. So be careful. If you see any Buddha, ask, tell him first. <laughs> Yeah, nowadays many live in Buddha, you know? Yeah. For example, many Tibetan monks, they say, yeah, live in Buddha, live in Tuku, 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 for example, no? So if you go near any Tibetan <laughs> Tuku, Tuku, you would say, please, I like my hair. <laughs> I want to keep it, <laughs> just in case, you know? If you want to be a disciple from some of these uh, Tibetan live in Buddha reverend, yeah? You have to tell him first, I'd like to study with you, please, sir, but i like to keep my hair <laughs> and my clothes I keep also. <laughs> because here, yeah, suddenly all the, his hair fell off to the ground 
and then the clothes that he he wore changed into chasa, I mean the monk's <laughs> the monk's robe. Yeah. And from then on, he followed the Buddha everywhere. And because he already originally very intelligent, yeah. So it's not very long. He attained our hearts. Oh, you are so good. How do you know? <laughs> Magical power, huh? Normally, I should give you one. One of this kind of lecture, a lecture once a month is enough for you to have time to digest and to practice it, you know. Mm. But because of many other outsides, so I read it all. Okay, I read a lot every day, and slowly you go home. You have to check it out again. Okay, assimilate it and truly think about it and bring it into practice. Okay, now we make it uh, fun and happy, happy. And joyful, but at home you should seriously consider each uh, lesson, you know, as if the only one yeah, before you die. So you have to study it well, yeah. Really, really try to understand it and practice it. Okay. Thank you. Learning from the uh, ancient practitioners and ancient Buddhas, their teaching is still. So much valuable. Any time these teachings are timeless. Yes, the same with the teaching of the of uh, uh, Mahavira. Yes, you know he he teach people vegetarian. And same with Jesus. Yeah. Many mention about vegetarian. They edit it all in a later time, maybe. But the Mahavira teaching not, yeah. In Hindu, they don't they don't cut it off. They don't edit it. Mm. But even then, Jesus' teaching has helped you know countless of beings since the times he appeared until now. After he went back to heaven, his teaching is still valuable. Mm. Still helping a lot. Yeah. And the same with the great prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It's just that it's it's not everybody studied well and practiced it. That's all, and misunderstood or using his teaching for their own personal benefit. That's a different story. Understand? Okay. Now, yeah. So from now, uh, after that, this. Uh, Celestial Jewel never had to go back, transmigrating in these uh, three worlds again, liberated. Yeah. One day, when it's a little bit all relaxing and not too much work, I, Anan, yeah, I mean Anan, would like to know this uh, background of the Celestial Jewel. So I came. In front of the Buddha, and go straight to him and say, "Obeisance to the world honored one. Please tell us what kind of good deed, yeah, that uh, uh, celestial um, celestial jewel beat you uh, so in the former life that now, when he first born, he's already have a lot of jewel raining down from the sky for him." Then whatever he liked to eat, it will appear in front of him. He didn't even need to go shopping. How convenient! <laughs> How convenient! Mm. So please, mm, could you explain to us? Mm. You see, it's always Anand who asks, ne? Yeah, and nobody else asks anything. Rarely, rarely. Uh, in other, in other sutra, yes, you know, like. Maybe Manchusri or Sariputta, but really, uh, most most of the time, just Anan who ask. Yeah. So I was wondering. Oh, but these are uh, these are simple question anyway. They're not very uh, highly spiritual, so okay, he can do it. Because I was wondering if he know how to ask so good questions and why were 
Why was not he enlightened before the Buddha Nirvana? Understand? But I guess now this is a kind of similar, very simple story and simple question. It's easy to ask. So mm, the Buddha uh, told Anan, Anan, in the former period of life, of time, long, 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 long time ago, there was a Buddha come to this world, came to this world, Tibati, similar Buddha, yeah? Wow, that Buddha is famous. <laughs> he came um, to to rescue many souls, uh, you know, you cannot count how much, how many. Mm. One, one day, um, Many monks, you know, the whole the whole Osanga came out into the in into the village and city to for arm, eh? To beg for arm. Uh, a lot, a lot of people they are vying, vying with each other, or oh, vying, vying, huh? With each other, huh? <laughs> I mean, you know, they're trying to get first to offer, <laughs> mm, compete with each other, huh? <laughs> to make offering. To the monks. At that time, there was a very poor person. He saw them doing that. He was very, very happy, glad that they do this, supporting mentally, you know, it with his, with his pure heart yeah, and generous spirit, even though he was very poor. Uh, he would also like to uh, earn some merit by offering to the Buddha and the Sangha, but he doesn't have any. What? Possession. Huh? Only possession. Yeah, he has no money, nothing. He has nothing. Mm. So, um, but he was so pleased or happy in his heart, you know, he didn't know what to do. So then, uh, reluctantly, he took out, he took a, a piece of, um, a piece of stone, you look like jewel, kind of, you know, round and beautiful. Yeah. Uh, a, a handful of that. You know, those pebbles sometimes, they look beautiful, huh? They're round and shining, yeah. So he took a, a handful of that. And then he, he uh, how you say, spread it, you know, on the road where, where the Sangha is walking, yeah. And then he, he left. But with, with all his sincere heart and respectful heart, and then at that time he said, again, you know, he said, yeah, like everybody else before, uh, <laughs> please give me the blessing so that life after life I will have a long life and born in a noble and rich families. Mm. And then also have a liberating uh, way of practice, just like all of you reverence. She's always uh, rich and famous first and then liberating <laughs> after. <laughs> yeah, and that's what he will get, I think. Anan, you should know, <laughs> the poor person who make offering with the pebbles at that time, with all his uh, heart, have faith in the three jewels, mean the Shangha, the Buddha, the Shangha, and the Dharma, yeah, have the utmost faith in the three jewels. Don't don't get confused with the jewel that he got now. Three jewels mean the Buddha, the Sangha, and the monks. Yeah, okay. They liken in the in the former uh, former time people liken this is like jewels. You see, so three jewels. That mean the three um, the the three pillar of Buddhism. Yeah, the Buddha, the Sangha, and the Dharma. Yeah. Because of that. It's 91 aeons past. He has always uh, uh, derived a lot, a lot of uh, rewards. You know, always, wherever he's born, always very peace, have peace and richness and everything he needs, he always has. Yeah. And even nowadays, he has good affinity enough to meet me and uh, attain a heart, you know, the liberation. Yes. So at that time, all the people in the in the assembly, hearing the Buddha first, they all aspire to make more offering. 
yeah, and and uh, how you say, really uh, appreciate the merit that any offering brings to them. Yeah. And then because of that, many people uh, attain different levels of consciousness at that time. I guess he was not just saying that, but he gave initiation too. Just like whenever I give initiation, different people will see different light, uh, different level, and like that. Yeah, I don't just talk, talk, talk. I <laughs> just afterward give initiation. That was before when I went around the world and do that. Yeah. Okay, so everybody uh, happy, happy. Uh, bow to the Buddha and get out. <laughs> I mean, go home. Mm. Okay, huh? Mm. All right. Every day one story, good enough. <laughs> Yeah, more or less one hour. Huh? So bad. Okay, any good question? Hmm? <laughs> yeah, but you know, the, the story about the grass is familiar to me. It just, just if you you live in, in a community or something, your grass has to be trimmed all the time. Even one time I uh, bought a... a I bought a, a, a trailer, hmm? you know, a trailer. We had three, four rooms in it. Uh, we make many telephone conference, uh, tele, tele conference in that trailer. So squeezy <laughs> because room is very small, you know, very small. And the living room in the front is too uh, exposed, you know. So and when I talk, people might hear. They see too big light inside, so we have to squeeze in the back room. And the back room is uh, normally used uh, for for dog. Some of the dogs, well, they are everywhere anyway. But when I had to make conference, they all have to squeeze in the front. Uh, well, there's another room, side room in front of the kitchen and the living room, and they they all have to go in there. You know, in front of the kitchen, in that side room, and in the living room. And then we, three of us, squeezing in in uh, that small room. You know, the back the back is of the room, the, uh, of the house. And uh, the poor people, they, they could not even sit, you know. They could not even cross leg. There's no room, so they sit like this. The boys sit like this with their computer. with their <laughs> It's very cute. Yeah. I also sit in the corner, you know. Uh, I have the better place, you know. I have to be seen. <laughs> A good excuse, yeah. And even then, even then, we have just a kind of a square patch of grass in the front yeah, and some little flower bushes here and there. But even then, it's supposed to trim it. Yeah. If you don't, then the manager might kick you out, meaning you can take your caravan, go somewhere else, because the land belongs to them. Every year we have to pay, you know, the landlord money. The caravan belongs to me, <laughs> but the land not. You see, in that caravan park, you, you uh, I think you cannot, well, you can buy some if it's private owned. But the caravan I had is not privately owned, the, the land is not privately owned. Even then, you, private or not, if you're in their big uh, community of, of that uh, park, tra trailer park, then you have to trim your grass. I saw my neighbor. I wasn't all that uh, strict, but my neighbor truly. I'm not. I'm not making it up. He used scissors. <laughs> he cut every every day. Just one little, <laughs> one little blade should up. He immediately go cut, cut, cut. Oh, well, his house is better than my house. It was like a wooden kind of uh, ready-made house. Yeah white and clean. My house is so old. I bought it from an old lady because that's the only one that I knew at that time for sale and immediately move in, you know? Yeah. So we were happy. I was happy to have a place. Otherwise, how, how do we do all these conferences? The time is kind of uh, pressing, you know? Pressing. I was so happy to get it. Get it. I don't live there anymore. It's all sold now. <laughs> yeah.
It's a cold country, you know. It was in Belgium. Mm. Yeah. But in winter, it's beautiful. It's near the beach, though. Near, near. You can walk uh, about one kilometer from the beach. I go with my bicycle. <laughs> I went with my bicycle at that time. Even then, just a patch of grass, not even one square meter, just like that, like that. Oh, a rectangle, just like that. And then he trimmed it. Oh. And then he saw my dog, Harley, you know, after he, he pee, he scratched grass trying to cover up. I said, what is he doing? Look at what he's doing. Like, wow. I said, I'm sorry, like a big crime, you know. So I'm sorry, my dog, I'm ado- I adopted him. I can't teach him very well. I adopted him when he's too old already. It's very difficult to teach him. Please forgive us. I, I will cover it back. And tomorrow he dig it up again. And he said, what is doing again? <laughs> Every day until the neighbors fed up. <laughs> so he, he looked the other side and the dog also looked the other side. <laughs> Don't care no more. Every time I see the neighbor come out, I, I humbly try to cover it, you know, and he feel, I guess he feels satisfied that I really am scared, <laughs> you know, that I'm scared of him and I do this humbly, you know. So he feel not too bad, but if you argue with him, then it would be worse, you know. He might report to the manager or something, yeah. So he feel good that I, that I confess my sin and <laughs> that I beg for my dog's mercy, you know, and uh, then he's happy. Yeah, well, they were good neighbors. And then I cook curry and all that and bring over to make offering. <laughs> so, and then when I bake, bake some cakes or something, I buy some vegan chocolate and make offering, you know, to the Buddha next door. <laughs> then we had very peaceful neighborhood. Not just him, but around the neighbors, you know, eating my cakes, and they're all very peaceful. Lovely, lovely, yeah. It's just that over there I cannot have all of you like this, surely not, yeah? Yes. But at least life was peaceful, mm, yeah. peaceful, peaceful. Mm. Ah, talking about grass. <laughs> yeah, we humans do many nonsensical things, huh? Work a lot for nothing, yeah. But you have to, it's a law. <laughs> Yeah, because if you don't cut your grass and make somebody report and put to in, put you in jail, even yes, it happened. There was a, I, I look on TV long time ago. There was one lady. She's too old. She didn't cut the the grass in front of her house or around her house, and the neighbor kept warning her, and then she she couldn't do it. And she's alone and old, you know. So they reported to the police, and the police really came and put her in jail. Imagine that. Really? And then when he came, but all the kids in the neighborhood, you know, feeling sorry for the lady. So they they came there and moaned the lawn for her. So when she came back, oh, it's a happy house, you know. <laughs> so that after that, the police saw that the grass is mown and clean, tidy, so they let her come home. And she came home to a well manicured grass, yeah. My God, imagine! God, do you understand? <laughs> it's a serious thing. <laughs> yeah, it's serious. Whew. Lucky we, we don't live there, huh? Because my grass are not all that trim, you know? I mean, we trim n- n- <laughs> now and then when, when the resident feel like to do it. Oh, I send them, but sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, sometimes they cut a patch here, a patch there, it look even worse. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, at least they don't uh, put me in jail. <laughs> oh, yeah, what a world, huh? For a piece of grassy garden, you go to jail. It's true, the story, true story. Germany is also. Even if it's a, um, our old garden, our old home, yeah. no? if we don't trim the grass and don't trim the uh, trees, and the neighbor get angry, yeah, yeah. They, they look all the time. Yeah. This is so. I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Some places like that. When I was in Germany, the, the grass always moans, so it's okay. Yeah. 
It's okay. Ah, <laughs> oh, just that a lot of work, huh? Mm. It's nice to have grass, but this is too serious, no? Yeah, because. In such a community, you cannot just have your garden with wheat growing with different kind of flowers all that. When I was in San Jose, I own a, a, a mountain, a little mm. mountain, and we never had to mow the grass, you know. And all kind of beautiful flowers, wildflower, you know, wheat, even uh, uh, even uh, uh, orchid, land orchid, oh beautiful, and all kind. I don't know what name, different colors. Beautiful, and I always walk around and look, look, and ah, oh, my heart feels so good, so good. But the neighbors make so much trouble. Don't let us pass through and all that. So later, I had to sell it <laughs> again. I still like, I still remember that place. I love it. That's the only, almost the only mountain that still has tree. Many other mountains are all, you know, nude. They cut it or it's dead. I don't know why. Yeah. My tree, my my mountain has a big, big tree, you know, eucalyptus or any all different kind of tree. When I was there, we just use a dry wood to barbecue, you know, to cook every day with that, and we have some caravan and we just live happily. But at that time, I was very busy. I always had to go here and there to do lecture, so my time there is always short and always too short, <laughs> always too short. I love that place. I love that time. Just a handful of. Uh, a uh, resident, you know, and monks and nuns and cook homemade stuff and oh, beautiful. And every day we sit uh, around the fire and we eat our food and we talk and we laugh and it was really beautiful. It's, it's like heaven to me. Yeah, very difficult to find such a place again. That mountain is truly untouched. So all the wheat, they grow so beautifully as if I see if some best garden in the world has done it. I, I guess nobody can do as good. They just grow so naturally, so beautiful, and, and not messy, and not overgrow. They're just beautiful. <laughs> ah, yeah. I don't have good luck. I, I really never wanted to leave that place, but I was an American. I don't have visa to stay long, number one. Number two, I had to go lecture everywhere. Every time I left that place, I feel like I left a piece of my heart there. Because it was so beautiful and quiet. Yes. And the neighbor wanted to if if one piece we have to buy their land and their house down there. But I didn't have that much money at that time. I had to use it to buy another piece of land for the disciples in San Jose also. But the other one, you know. And then also have neighbor's problem with horse and with water and all kind of, and still have now. No more? Better now? Yeah. They buy it? They bought the land? No, we should not. No? Just as it is. But just see, it's just better. Ignore it, huh? Better. Okay, good, good, good. I cannot keep buying land and then solving problem for you year after year, time after time. Oh, I'm really tired. I'm getting old now. Look at all my wrinkles. <laughs> I don't see much because of the <laughs> the good light. Okay, now you know everything. Somebody leaving tomorrow? I see the cakes. <laughs> huh? No? Okay. Then the cake you can eat. <laughs> look, 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 look. <laughs> if you're hungry. Should we serve you something? Some sweet? What? Yeah, yeah that's some. Okay, huh? Yeah, but no, more than 15 minutes. No, I don't like sweet. No? Bread? No? Bread? Oh, no, I take too long to cook. Oh, that's right. 10 minutes. Oh, it's okay. Thank you. I can eat anything. I was just joking. No. 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 Because um, I get in fat too. <laughs> I'm getting fat here only. That is <laughs> if I'm fat all over, then it's not bad. But I'm fat just here. <laughs> I feel it. <laughs> it's a big difference from from the when I was in the mountain. 
You don't know it. I know. Okay. No matter what you say, I know. <laughs> I cannot believe you because I know. <laughs> yeah. In the mountain, I don't cook a lot. I don't cook good, and so I wasn't that fat. And I feel light, you know. And now I feel light. I'm walking like you know. Easier. And now I walk, feel something. <laughs> I'm uh, carrying something. <laughs> so if one day, two day, I was thinking maybe, um, maybe uh, uh, one week you cook. Uh, every day, two days a week is good enough. I eat anything with them. Otherwise they're jealous. They think, oh, my master, eat something good. We sit and sleep and eat two meals a day. Have to work at only one meal a day. Good enough. God, what kind of meal? You know, one meal, but what kind? <laughs> yeah. Very. Sometimes you cook a lot with the fry and stuff, and then it adds on very quickly. And we, we buy something for you to exercise. <laughs> you want to Crazy, you know. You have to go shopping, cooking, eat a lot, and then have to buy something else. It's like the story of the grass. How about not not cooking the price stuff anymore? No, I also that's good. That's good. That's a problem. Just small portions. That's so What did you eat today for dinner? Was it good? Yes. Same like yesterday? Because the morning is same like yesterday. Huh? Similar. Similar like yesterday. Except the salad sauce today, she put some oil in it. Normally, normally she says she don't put oil in anything. Yeah, a little bit, okay. But not too much, it's oh, okay also, yeah. I don't know because... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> the Vietnamese food is it's so um, compatible to me, you know, so I like it a lot and I eat a lot. And... Okay. All right then, thank you very much. Thank you, Master. Thank you for your love, okay? Tomorrow is no problem. Ciao. Ciao.